Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today's lecture would be, um, well, the last one in the series about different trigonometric functions um, as far as their very, very basic properties are concerned. It's about cosecant. Um, that's how it's, sometimes it's actually called sec. But I will use this particular abbreviation. I like three letters in this case. So, about cosecant. Now, the previous lectures um, where I was explaining basic functions of sine, cosine, etc., I was using primarily the unit circle to demonstrate how the function behaves if we are increasing angle like from 0 to pi over 2 to pi to 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, etc. Um, in this particular case, uh, I'll just use a slightly different approach. I will use graphs um, and the definition of a cosecant. And the definition is one over sine. So you remember second is 1 over cosine, and cosecant is 1 over sine. So instead of analyzing this particular function as um, basically 1 over ordinate of a point on a unit circle, I will just start from the graph of sine, and I'll divide 1 by this particular graph. We know how to manipulate graphs. And that would give me the basic properties as much as, 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 as the other approach with unit circle. Um, why I decided to do it? Well, just to, you know, just to be different from the previous lectures and just to make sure that you understand that there are different approaches to the same problems and you can basically use one or another. And plus it's a good exercise in the graph transformation. So let's start with graph of the function sine. Now we know it's from minus 1 to 1. At 0, it's 0. Then at pi over 2, it reaches its maximum. At pi, it goes to 0. At 3 pi over 2, it goes to minus 1. And at 2 pi, it ends up at zero again. So that's how the sign behaves. Now, let's try to have one over sign. So this is y is equal to sine of x. Now, here I will have also 1 and minus 1, and I'll try to be um, on the same scale as in this particular case. Alright, so Let's think how I can divide one, 1 by this particular graph. Well, first of all, if, you have, if I'm dividing something by something, I should really worry about denominator being equal to 0, because in this particular case, obviously, um, the inver in, in, inverted graph uh, should go to infinity, positive or negative, when the sign goes to 0. So sign goes to 0 at point 0, pi, and 2 pi, etc. Every pi uh, is zero, which means we have asymptotes in these cases. In case of x is equal to zero, in case x is equal to pi, in case x is equal to two pi, and if you wish to continue this, we can do it to a negative territory. and asymptote is here as well. So we know that around these points, the graph goes to infinity, plus or minus. We just have to analyze which one. Okay, 
Now, from 0 to pi, not including the edges of this interval, the graph is positive, uh, which means 1 over sine will also be positive. So in this particular area, from 0 to pi, the graph will be above the x-axis. Now, at point pi over 2, it's 1. 1 over 1 is still 1, so we still have this point. This point of sine represents this point of 1 over sine. After which, if we go to the left or to the right from this point, sine is decreasing to 0, which means 1 over sine will be increasing to infinity, and it's a positive infinity, so the graph will go this way. By the way, by the way, if my denominator is decreasing, it's uh, obvious that the inverted, the, the fraction actually is increasing, right? Why is it obvious, by the way? Well, for a positive numbers, it's very easy. If you have A greater than B, this is an inequality, considering A and B are positive numbers, B is smaller, A is greater. I would like to, to prove that 1 over A is less than 1 over B. How can, I, how, how can I prove it? Well, considering this is an inequality, we can divide inequality by a positive um, number, and it will be the same inequality. So let's divide it by A. I will have A over A greater than B over A, or 1 greater than B over A. Now let's divide it by B also positive number, and it will retain. So 1 over b greater than b over a b, which is 1 over b greater than 1 over a. So we started a greater b and ended with 1 over a is less than 1 over b, right? 1 over b is greater than 1 over a. So that's why when the denominator uh, is going down, being positive, uh, the fraction goes up to infinity because the denominator goes to zero. Well, this is just a simple exercise. Let's forget it. I just don't want you to take basically for granted anything which I'm saying without the proof. You have to always look for the proof. Um, now, let's continue, left and right. Now, in this particular case, let me continue this. It would be like this, right? So, in this area, in this uh, interval from pi to 2 pi, not including the edges, now, in the middle, I have minus 1. Now, 1 over minus 1 would be minus 1. Now, the whole graph is negative, which means 1 over will be negative as well. It will be below the x-axis, and it will go to infinity, in this case, minus infinity, since we are talking about negative numbers, as from the middle point we go up. So it goes this way. And obviously the whole thing is very similar. That would be the graph. So this is a behavior of the function y equals second, uh, cosecond, sorry. Cosecond of x, which is 1 over sine of x. So Purely graphically, we just divided one over the graph and we got this one. So we can conclude basically uh, everything about behavior of this function, cosecond. Now, what else can we say? Uh, asymptotes at 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, minus pi, etc. So every pi we have uh, an asymptote. Or generally speaking, if x is equal to pi n, where n is any integer number, this function is undefined, and it has an asymptote. What else is important? Now, in the middle of each interval, it has either 1 or minus 1. So if you have something like if x is equal to pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, 
y is equal to 1, and if x is equal to uh, minus 2, minus plus 2pn, y is equal to minus 1, right? So pi over 2, and it will be pi over 2 plus 2pn, etc. Now, if minus pi over 2, this is minus pi over 2, then plus 2pn, etc., it will be minus 1. So these are local maximums and local minimums of the function. Okay, what else is important? Um, cos second of of x plus pi is equal to let's just think about it from the graphical standpoint if I add a pi for instance in this case add pi to p over 2 I will get 3 over 3 pi over 2 so it changes the sign so it looks like function changes the sign um, now why is it obvious well because it's 1 over sine and we know that sine actually also changes the sign if we add pi. So it's always this. Now, um, if, uh, if you consider the sine as a function, it's an odd function, right? Sine is an odd function. It's a symmetrical relative to this point, and it changes the sign if argument changes the sign, right? So we were talking about this. Well, obviously, this is transferred to uh, uh, cosecant. So cosecant of minus x is equal to minus cosecant of x because of the same property, because cosecant is 1 over sine. Um, finally, x minus pi. Oh, OK. So cosecant of x minus pi is equal to, well, let's think about, it. it's a periodic function, so you can always add to pi. It will be the same as cosine, uh, uh, not cosine, cosecant of x minus pi plus 2 pi, right? Since 2 pi is a period, which is cosecant of x plus pi, which is, we just talk about this, it's minus cosecant of x. Now, the cosecant of pi minus x, since cosine, the cosecant is an odd function, would be equal to cosine, the uh, cosecant uh, of x. I'm always uh, pi minus x. That would be always equal to cosecant of x. Why? Because this is negative to this, and the function is odd, so this should be uh, this should be negative to this. And in addition, if you remember, the sine of pi minus x uh, is the same as sine x, um, and uh, obviously one over sine would be the same. So that's these properties. Basically, that's it. Um, no more. <coughs> No more interesting material. So what's important about this particular graph is that, first of all, we can say that the domain of the function is real numbers except those which are multiple of pi's, of pi. So 0, pi, 2 pi, minus pi, minus 2 pi, etc. These are all uh, points where the function is not defined. It has asymptotes. Now, what about the range? Um, well, you remember the range of the sine is from minus 1 to 1. The range of 1 over sine would be either greater than 1 or less than minus 1. The interval from minus 1 to 1 is not part of the range of this function. Okay? It doesn't take these values within these. Starting from 1 up and from minus 1 down, yes it does. So that's the range. Uh, Basically, that's it. Um, I will spend probably some time uh, talking about different 
<coughs> various this function takes uh, for different angles. Um, but uh, basic properties are are just like that. Um, that's it for this particular uh, lecture. That's it about explanation of what cosecant actually is all about. Thanks very much. <laughs>